Hi guys. Okay, so uh, let's get to chapter one. Um, I see that several of you had already, you know, looked at the content in the introductory module. And some of you told me that you were unable to open the video that was related to the course orientation. But the slides of the course or, you know, the presentation or the orientation are here. You can see them as a, this is a PDF file also of the same slides. So if you can't open the video, you can at least have a look at the slides. So they're there. Then make sure that, you know, you look at the syllabus. And so we already discussed all this. So let's move on to the next chapter. <coughs> and excuse me, I'm still very, very sick, you know. And so you guys also need to be very careful with this Delta variant. <laughs> it's nothing seems to be working with it but anyways <clears throat> so okay so uh we talked about this um uh, the course orientation is done now let's look at the chemistry in our lives so i posted this video watch watch means this is a video on the wonders of nature so you know just make sure that you know you clicked on this and then once you've done later on you're going to you know do this activity which is post your own um, you know, observations in nature that intrigue you, that fascinate you. You know, there are so many things in nature. We don't look, you know, sometimes we just don't pay attention, but, you know, sometimes we wonder, you know, why is this happening? You know, why does this, what's the cause behind it? And the chemistry is everywhere. Chemistry is a study of matter. So, you know, uh, I really want you to get excited about, you know, first of all, looking at the world around you, and then we are going to look at the applications of chemistry in, uh, you know, different industries and so forth. Okay, so let's look at now chapter one. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, so here are the slides, you know, so I mean, the book is obviously I gave you in the form of PDF, but just so you know, I would like to refer to the slide sometimes. And since I'm not feeling well today, so I'm going to do this uh, presentation from the slides. So anyways, just let's look at it first, starting from this first deck. Now the chemistry in our lives. So we know that you know, the chemistry is basically a study of matter and there are three forms of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. And when we look at it, when you talk about chemistry, we think that, oh, these are just the scientists who wear glasses and gloves and lab coats and they work with the chemicals. And, you know, this is, yeah, they do all these, you know, investigative activities. This is a scientist who's working in a forensic, you know, field, but scientists, the chemists are everywhere. They have a very wide, you know, uh, field to operate in. So again, these are the chemists generally, you know, work in the laboratories, but chemists do many other things also. So here, this is a typical, you know, chemistry involves reactions. So you have to pay attention to, you know, the safety rules, very especially when you're working in the labs. Now, three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. So this is the solid, as you see, this is the Alka-Seltzer tablet. Water is a liquid. And when you drop the Alka-Seltzer tablet in the water, what do you see? You see bubbles. These bubbles are actually gas. So Alka-Seltzer tablet is made up of some chemicals. And when these chemicals react with water, they produce carbon dioxide gas, which is released. And the gases like to expand. So they don't, so the moment they are formed in the water, they escape out of the water. So that's how the bubbling happens. So, you know, when we talk about chemistry, basically it is a study of composition, it means what are the substances made up of? Structure, what is the structure of the molecules that that, that substance is made up of? What are the properties? You know, like here, the property is it's a solid, it's white in color, it's, you know, a little bit rough, it's um, round in shape, right? Liquid is going to be wet and it's transparent, you know, and then the gases are like colorless, but they form bubbles and we can hear them fizzing, right? So this is a tough, this is also an example of a chemical reaction, okay? So this is happening all around us every day. All kinds of chemical reactions are happening. So when we talk about chemistry, we deal, we talk about the matter, okay? So when we talk about, when we say substance, this is a very common word that we use in chemistry, substance. Substance is a, like, you know, anything in general, this is a very general term. So antacid is a substance, water is a substance, glass is a substance, air is a substance. So substance and matter are kind of interchangeable, right? We say that. So everything is made up of, you know, some substances. So now look at these here. Chemicals are also substances. So like I said, substance is a very generalized term. So here, everything you see 
all around you is made up of chemicals. So look at the toothpaste. So the toothpaste is a combination of many chemicals, okay? And there is a certain definite ratio in which these substances are combined so that they can, they're not toxic, you know? So chemicals can be toxic. So look at these chemicals that are present inside the toothpaste. There's calcium carbonate, that's the name of a chemical. And what is the function of it? It is used and is abrasive to remove plaque, sorbitol. It prevents the loss of water and hardening of toothpaste. That's that sorbitol is what makes it soft. Sodium lauryl sulfate, that's the name of a chemical. And it is used to loosen the plaque, you know, to make it like you, you need to remove the plaque from your teeth. So that's it makes helps. It works with the calcium carbonate. Both of them do the same thing. Titanium dioxide, it makes the toothpaste white, right? The color, the triclosan, it inhibits the bacteria right? Sodium fluorophosphate, it prevents the formation of cavities and methyl salicylate, it gives toothpaste that flavor, right? So all these things added in a certain ratio make up that toothpaste. Now, here's the thing with chemistry. Chemistry and working in a kitchen is the same thing, okay? Chemistry, like you're working in a kitchen, when you make your food, there are certain ingredients you need to add in a certain definite amount, right? So those definite amount, that, that's, that's what then is going to produce your desired food, your desired dish, right? Same thing is here. So all those ratios, the math plays a huge role. Now comes the look at the chemicals that are present in your kitchen. So here you have the fruits, the shiny, the shine on the fruits, right? Fruits are grown with fertilizers and pesticides. So those fertilizers and pesticides, they are chemicals. The shine on the fruits, the glaze that you get on the fruits, the, the wax, that is also a chemical. Look at this, um, the gas that comes in the kitchens. That is an, again, a natural gas, right? The things that is layered, you know, the layers, the coverings on the kitchen, those are natural, some polymers. Okay, the refrigerator is a metal alloy made up of metals, right? <clears throat> Iron, for instance. Iron, uh, like mixed with something else makes it an alloy, okay? Like steel, steel would be iron and carbon combined together. That's an alloy. Then comes the silicon dioxide glass. That's the glass in the window. That is, that is of course, a chemical. And the chemically treated water that is coming, that has been purified and clean, you know? Also, everything is, you, is 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 uh, is uh, uh, made up of chemicals. Okay, now let's look at this. Which of the following contains the chemicals? This is our study check problem. Which of the following contains the chemicals? Sunlight, fruit, milk, or breakfast? So sunlight is the light, right? So that is a form of energy. But fruit is a form of chemical. Milk contains chemicals. Breakfast cereal is, has chemicals, okay? We don't like to hear the word chemicals in fruit, but that's what it is, okay? Because fruit is a type of a matter and it is made up of chemicals. Now, chemicals is basically a little bit harsh term to use. I would like to use the word some kind of compounds or some kind of molecules. That's better, okay? So the fruit has is made up of molecules. Milk also contains molecules of, you know, some, some compounds. Breakfast cereal also, it contains molecules of compounds. Okay, so this is the very basic thing about, you know, the, the chemistry around us. Now let's look at what is the meaning of scientific method. Now here's the thing, we have been observing, you know, different phenomena in nature. And we have always been intrigued by it. But then comes a time when we really need to like start exploring it with some kind of, you know, scientific method attached to it. So what is a scientific, scientific, like thinking like a scientist? So thinking like a scientist is like, first of all, you always make observ observation. That is why I am asking you to write down the wonders of nature. I want you to make some observations in nature and then ask some questions. Why does the lightning sound? Why does the water flow? Why is, why is the water always colorless? You know, why does the water, why does it always, when you freeze it, why does it expand, right? Why is it that the water causes weather? Why does the water bead? You know, when, when it's raining, why does it, call, why does it form that round beads, right? Um, similarly, like oil, you know, why doesn't oil like heat up, you know, at like quickly? Why doesn't the oil evaporate? 
Whereas uh, if you put your nail polish remover, you know, it will evaporate, right? Um, why, wh why, what is the color, you know? Why, wh why is nail polish, you know, a certain color or what, what causes the, that shine inside the nail polish? You see that? So those type of, I want you to make some observations. I'm just giving you some examples here. After that comes the hypothesis. Now hypothesis is based on some kind of educated guess, okay? Now there is always a theory Theory is like a body of knowledge. And, and that body of knowledge, when you relate, bring that body of knowledge, then, then you, you are able to build some kind of a educated guess based on something that is already known. After that, you conduct experiments. With experiments means that you are going to have some apparatuses, right? Now in the past, people used to do experiments in the garage, in the kitchen, you know, all out on the, into the open. And they used to take whatever utensils they could get. But later on, you know, our apparatus, the glass apparatus is more like, um, more like for more quantifiable. In other words, we can actually measure how much of one liquid are we adding? How much of uh, are we weighing? What is the temperature? How much of the heat are we giving? You know, those things. So these experiments are conducted because we want to find out something, okay? We want to see whether every time this happens or not, or when does this happen, those things. And then we make conclusions once we gather the data, okay? so. All these, uh, suppose there is a friend, you know, in her home, you, when you visit her, and after that, when you, every time you, you arrive in her house, you begin to sneeze, okay? So you're, you, you observe that your friend has a new cat, right? So that's your observation that you're sneezing maybe because you're allergic to the cat. So you ask yourself, why are you sneezing? So then you build a hypothesis that maybe you are allergic to cats because when you come out, Maybe you don't sneeze. When you are with the cat in her room or in her house, then you, you sneeze. But you now you want to verify it. So that's how you conduct these experiments. Okay, so then you, you take, start taking these notes. Sometimes these notes are taken on the table. Okay, on a table, you make tables, you know. And then you see, okay, today, day one, visited the friend, sneezed. The cat was there. Day two, went to the friend's house. The cat was not there sneezed hmm okay maybe the the cat dander is there anyways you come third day day three went to the friend's house no cat did not sneeze so one day you sneeze the other day you don't sneeze you know so this is how you you as you get start gathering the data more and more thoughts come to your mind that why is it that certain things happen in a certain way in some 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 time and sometimes they don't happen and sometimes more and more experiments evolve but you do make a conclusion that okay every time i go to her house i sneeze but when i leave i don't sneeze so you know there's like some conclusions you draw Okay, so this is like just, you know, scientific reasoning. Now, sometimes your conclusions could be faulty or sometimes you're not sure, you know, or sometimes you feel like, oh, I need more and more data. So you build and redefine your hypothesis. Okay, it's not the cat. It's something in my friend's house, something else, you know, she leaves her house so dirty. Maybe it's just a pollen or the dust in her room or something, you know, so it's not the cat. So, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, this is how, you know, it just keeps going. Okay. Now let's look at a study check problem. Identify each of the following as an observation of a hypothesis, an experiment or a conclusion. Okay, now let's do this. During your visit to a gym, your trainer records that you ran for 25 minutes on the treadmill. So what is that? Is it an observation, hypothesis, experiment or a conclusion? So your, your trainer records that you ran 25 minutes. So he's recording, he's taking a data. Okay, so this is a type of observation. Okay, next is, let's look at the next. Scientific studies show that exercising lowers the blood pressure. Now that's the scientific studies show. Now that is scientific studies. Scientists conduct these studies and they publish them. And they, that is what makes like a theory, a part of a theory. Okay, and anything that relates to some pre-existing knowledge becomes hypothesis. Yeah, exercising lowers the blood pressure, possible. It looks like very convincing, 
but maybe something else also lowers the blood pressure. Maybe it's the diet also, something in the diet, right? So that's how this second piece, it could be hypothesis, but here they're saying conclusion, but that is also depends, you know, that could be scientific studies, unless you're conducting the experiments in scientific studies, okay? That also, that, that if you conducted experiments in scientific studies, so that can be a conclusion. So like, you know, going back and forth. So this conclusion and hypothesis are, you know, they, they, they keep, they keep moving. So they can be interchanged. So something that is a hypothesis is an educated guess can become true or cannot become true. But hypothesis is always based on some pre-existing, some data, some knowledge, some theory, you know, those things. Okay. Next is, uh, which was the next one? Okay. Uh, which of, where did we go? Hmm. Uh, oh, right here. Okay, your doctor thinks that your weight loss is due to increased exercise. Your doctor thinks that your weight loss is due to increased exercise. So here, your doctor is thinking, right? He's thinking that maybe. So this could be, again, a hypothesis or it could be a conclusion. It doesn't really matter. But so like I said, they, they interchange. So but he's thinking. It's only thinking based on something he's thinking. So it could be conclusion. It could be hypothesis. Okay. So, you know, we don't get too technical about this. I'm not going to ask, you know, this type of questions, but just to give you an idea about scientific methodology. Okay. Now we are going to look at our study plan. Now, some of you were asking me, what do you want me to put inside? No, this is a very personalized thing. I already told you it's all based on your individual learning style. So identify your learning style, and then you are going to be creating, you know, your own. So I was just looking at some of the study plans you guys already, um, you know, have put, which is a great thing, but some of you might need help with the math skills. So please include that, you know, you might have to do some practice on your own. Okay, um, then you have to kind of do a lot of review, reading, all those things. So, I mean, I'm going to just leave it at there. I'm not going to question you on the study grams, study, uh, the study, what is it called, a study plan. But you can, you know, get an idea from here. But you've, I think you've done a much better job than what is given in this book. So don't worry about this piece right here. All right, now let's look at the math skills. Now, these are important. All right, here you have a picture of a graph. Okay, so. Look at this graph. It's graph is a visual representation of a relationship. So here is this y axis, the one that is vertical. The one that is horizontal is the x axis. So on the x axis is the temperature. This is the y axis, which contains volume. So volume is measured in liters, that's the units. Temperature is measured in centigrade, so that's the units. So this and this are called variables, means their values change. So as you can see, these dots on the lines, these are the different data points, or these are the different values. When, when the temperature is 20, what is the volume? The volume is 24.0. When the temperature is 40, what is the volume? The volume is roughly like a little bit less than the, you know, 26, less than 26, maybe 25.9 or something like that. Okay, when the temperature is 60, what is the volume? Volume is again like less than this is 27.8 or 27.9, something like that in that area. Okay, when the temperature, when the volume is 30, what is the temperature? So come down here, the temperature could be between 80 and 100, so it could be 90. Now, <clears throat> Of course, this is done using a ruler, so more exact values come from there. However, here is a pattern you see. As the temperature is increasing, right, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, you see that the value of the volume also increases. So as the volume increases, the temperature is increasing. That means there is a direct relationship between the volume and temperature. So you can see small volume, large, big volume, and a very large volume when the temperature is increased. So this is how you interpret the graphs and you make the graph, okay? Now, here is a very simple, you know, math exercises here. We are looking at the place values. So just so you know how to read the number. So if you have a number 2518, what does this mean? What are the place values? The value of eight is at once, or it's also called unit. 
This one is at a ten, tens place, okay? Five is at hundreds place and two is at thousands place. So what is this number? How is it read? 2,518, okay? So that's, that's the, the value with the place value. Now, in case there is a decimal, 6.407 grams. So in that case, what happens? So <coughs> the one that are after the decimal, you have to add the th, th sound, th sound. So 0 0.4, 0 0.4 is at the tenths position. Zero is at the hundredths position. You see that th sound. And seven is at the thousandths position. So you see these, you go further away. Tenths is bigger than the hundreds. Hundreds is bigger than the thousands. So the further away you go from the decimal, it becomes smaller and smaller. Here, six is at the ones position. Okay, so the number is 6.407. So that's, the, that's how you would say, okay? Now, negative and the positive number. So keep that in mind. Positive number is a bigger number. Negative number is a smaller number. That means it is less than zero. Positive number is more than zero, okay? Now, when two positive numbers, now these are the general rules, positive and positive, and they are multiplying, the answer is a positive number. Two negative numbers multiplying, minus minus becomes plus. Plus and plus dividing produce a plus answer. The sign in front of that number is positive. Negative number divided by another negative number, these two negative signs cancel out and you get a positive number. So you see, plus multiply by plus is a plus. Minus multiply by minus is equal to plus. Plus divided by plus is a plus. Minus divided by a minus is a plus sign, okay? Now let's look at plus multiplied by a minus number. Positive number multiplied by a negative number, the answer is negative. Negative number multiplied by a negative, positive number, the answer is still negative. Positive number divided by a negative number, the answer is negative. Negative number divided by a positive number, answer is negative. So the way we say it when you talk about the rules is plus multiply by minus is minus, minus multiply by plus is minus, my, uh, plus divided by minus is minus, and minus divided by plus is minus. So that's how you say. Now, if you're adding, what's the deal? So two positive numbers added, the answer has a positive sign. Two negative numbers, minus, minus is plus, but the sign is of a big number. So the big number is four. So three and three are going to be added, but the sign is retained. And that's always of a bigger number. Now you have 12 and 15. 15 is a bigger number, but the sign is 15 as a negative. So positive, and when this bracket opens, it's a negative. So positive gets canceled out. So in other words, it's an, it's, it will be minusing, but the sinus is, is of a bigger number. So 12 plus minus 15, that means 15 minus 12, and the sign is of 15 minus, big number. Now comes another situation where a positive number is subtracting a negative number. So positive minus plus minus, when this bracket opens up, it becomes minus and the sign is of a positive because 12 is a, a bigger, bigger number, positive number. Now here, when the bracket signs opens out, minus minus becomes plus, okay? So 12 plus five becomes 17. Now here you have minus and minus when this bracket opens up or the parenthesis opens up, minus minus becomes plus. So minus 12 plus five but the sign is going to be of a big number. So, and it is still going to subtract. So 12 minus five is seven and the sign is of 12, big number. Here, when the bracket opens up plus and multiply by plus and minus, minus. So you have the minus five and you have minus 12, but minus and minus is added together. So 12 plus five is 17, but the sign is of a big number. So remember that anytime you have a uh, positive and negatives, you know, addition and subtraction, <coughs> excuse me, the sign is always going to be of the big number, 
Okay. Now the calculators, you guys should know how to use the calculators. Even if you're going to use your phone, you know, we have these scientific calculators on the phone. So just make sure that you know what signs are positive, you know, plus signs and what are negative and how to divide and multiply, you know, so you can refer to, you know, your calculators for that. Okay, next is calculating percentages. Percentages are parts to whole, big, like small parts over a big one. So if there are eight chemistry books and there are total eight, 32 books, so what is that percentage? Eight divided by 32 times 100%, that gives you 25%, okay? If the percentage of red balls is five red balls, it means that there are red, there are five red balls, five. So if you say 5%, 5% red balls means that five are red balls are present in a total of 100 balls, okay? So 5% is, is split up into like this, five over 100, okay? All right, next is the basic algebra, 2x plus eight is equal to 14, okay? So how do you do this? So you remember the like terms, eight and 14 are like, and two X is an unlike, you know, with eight. So we do, we bring the like terms on one side. So eight is a positive on this side in order to get rid of eight, this side you add minus eight. So plus eight and minus eight cancel out. And then on this side, you have minus eight. So Positive eight on the left-hand side becomes a negative eight on the right-hand side. So that's one way of looking at it. But anyways, you my, bring minus eight on both the sides. So this side, it's canceled out. You're left with two X and this is six. Now you need to solve for X. So two is multiplying by X. So in order to get rid of this two, you divide by two on both the sides. So two and two, when it's divided together, two and two can cancel out. And the six over three, two becomes three. So X is equal to three, okay? And then you can check your answer to that also. But if you're weak on math, then you need to look at the math worksheets I had already posted. Plus you also have some more, you know, CUDA software math worksheets to work on. So do them on your own, okay? Next is solving the following equations for P1. All right, so if you want to find the value of P1, how do you do this? You need to get rid of V1 on this side. And in order to do that, because V1 is multiplying with P1, so we divide by V1 on both the sides. So V1 and V1 are going to cancel out. So this is how they've done. V1 here divided and V1 is dividing here. So these, this V1 and V1 cancel out. Okay, so this is basic math. Okay, now interpreting graph. Um, <clears throat> We already discussed, you know, the, the graphs, you know, how to, the gas, the, the volume right here, we already discussed this. So this is a direct relationship as the temperature increases, the pressure increases, okay? There is also another one, which is used the rise over run, the slope, the slope of the line. Y is equal to MX plus B, as you guys must have heard that in your previous math classes, but the slope, you can also measure the slope rise over run, rise over run right? So there's a positive slope or there's a negative slope and like, so those things, okay? So now comes the next part is the scientific notation. Scientific notation and the standard notation. Now, generally we write our numbers in the standard form. This is a standard form. 2400 is a standard form. But if we need to write it in the scientific notation, what happens is that there is an implied decimal right here. Okay, right here where the cursor is, you see after the zero, after the zero is the this part right here, which is blue color, right here is the implied decimal, which we don't know, we don't see it, right, which but it's there. So what you do is this has to move one, two, and three. So three places we moved that decimal. So where is that three going to go? It goes to the power of 10. So you're now your answer becomes 2.4 into 10 to the power three, okay? I mean, in general, 10 to the power three is what? Thousand. So 2.4 multiplied by a thousand will give you 2400. 
Okay, that's one way. But why do we write a number that is in scientific not standard notation to a scientific notation? Now, the thing is that these numbers are being used by, you know, scientists and everybody, you know. So these numbers can be lots of numbers. If uh, something is of a very large magnitude, like for example, the distance of Earth from a certain star, you know, uh, then it's lots of numbers. And that's going to take a lot of space on the paper. So we need to condense it and we make it into a very short form. So this is a scientific notation is a short form of writing in a standard notation for large numbers. Now, scientific notation is also right for the smaller numbers. Now, this is a smaller number. So when we did look at this again, 2400, zero, zero, here the decimal was here at the, in the end, which was not, which we don't write, but it's there. So we moved it three places to the left. And when we move three places to the left, the power is a positive number. Now, on the other hand, when you move to the right, what happens now? Here is the decimal. This is a small number. 0. 0.00086 is a very small number. And the decimal is right here. So now the decimal is moved. One, two, three, and four. So let's do it this way. One, two, three, sorry, moving. One, two, three, and four. After eight, you know, after eight. So always in scientific notation, you must have seen this pattern. Always there's one number first, then there's a decimal, and then there's a second number. So that's how you write, you know, this is called a coefficient. So anyway, so 8.6 has been, we moved it four places, but we moved it to the right. So the power is a negative exponent, okay? So now the scientific number becomes 8.6 10 to the power negative four, all right? Now, some positive powers. So if something is 10 to the power three, it means 10 to the power four, sorry. 10 to the power four means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Four tens are multiplying. It's a 10,000. That's what it means. 10 to the power three means 1,000, means 10 times 10 times 10. 10 to the power two means two, and 10 to the power one means just one tenth, okay? 10 to the power zero is a zero, okay? Anything raised to the power zero is a zero. On the other hand, in those cases where we have the numbers with the negative exponents, like that means they're small numbers. So that means one tenth, one tenth is 0.1. One, Tenth means 10 raised to the power minus one. 10 to the power minus two means one over 10 times one over 10. And that's written as 0 0.01, okay? Then 10 to the power negative three means one over 10 times one over 10 times one over 10. And other way of writing it is 0 0.001. 10 to the power negative 4 means 1 over 10 times 1 over 10 times 1 over 10 times 1 over 10. And that is 0 0.0001, okay? So these are the deal with the powers, okay? Now, this is like a, like a very, um, so it looks like a geode, but anyways, this looks, this is the diameter of a chicken box virus. So actually a virus, I don't know, it doesn't, I don't know if it looks like a virus, I don't know. But anyway, so it is three point into 10, three into 10 to the power negative seven meters. Now that's a very small number. Negative number, negative exponent, small. All right, now, <clears throat> if you have a number, these are just some of the examples, like for example, 8500 can also be written as 8.5 into 10 to the power positive three. Now, if you have 0 0.003, then this means that three into 10 to the power negative three because you move the decimal one, two, and after the three, not in front of three, okay? All right, then the scientific notations are also on the calculators, which you know you can use, you can just refer to this, okay? And then guide to scientific notations, we did, let's do the study check, okay? Write each of the following in the correct scientific notation. So if you have six, four, zero, 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 how would you write this? Now here, the decimal is implied, it's right here. So in the end where you see the cursor is. So where is the decimal going to move now? To the left, right? Because we, we want to move it after six, 6.4, we want to move it. So one, two, three, 
and four. So the decimal moved four places. That means it is going to be 10 to the power four. And the decimal moved four places to the left. That is why it will be a positive number. 6.4 into 10 to the power four. Now let's look at this as a small number. So writing in scientific notation, point moves one and two, and you stop. So it moved two places, but it moved two places to the right. And it's a small number. So the exponent is minus two. So your scientific notation becomes 2.1 into 10 to the power minus two, right here. 2.1, 10 to the power minus two, okay? All right, so this finishes your chapter one. And, um, you know, best would be you start with the extra credits and do the homework. And if you have any questions, you can ask me. But the best place to ask me, that is for everybody, I'm telling you, one place is because if everybody is asking me, you know, the same question in the email, it becomes, it's inefficient. You know, it's not, for me, it's inefficient because if I have to ask the same thing to the same, same thing over and over. So I, I prefer what you guys should do is if you have any question, simply hit the reply button and post your questions. Post your questions if any, okay? So this way, um, st other students can also reply. Other students can also answer. That's fine, you know, we, are building a cooperative, okay, learning environment in the class. Everybody is going to help each other, okay? Everyone is going to help everyone. So everyone helps everyone. So feel free to, you know, if some, if I, you know, I'm teaching other places also. If I'm unable to answer any question or if I don't see to it or I get to it, somebody else does, feel free to just answer, okay? And that is good. That is a good participation. That is a positive classroom participation, a positive. Helping anyone, it doesn't matter. You know, you may have lots of questions. It doesn't, what's a big deal? So just post your question here. Some of your classmates will respond if they see it. I will, when I get to it, I'll see it because I'm also teaching in other places, other classes. So, you know, my schedule is also tied. So we just want to make everything efficient, okay? So this is positive class room participation, okay? And here's the thing, if I will monitor, you know, I will be monitoring that I will monitor the threads if I see some information missing, okay? Some information missing, then I will also respond or further clarify as needed. All right. So, you know, we all have to work in this together. Okay, spellings, <laughs> respond. All right, guys. Okay. So, here. All right. So, that's what it is. And yeah, another questions that relate to the chapters are here, um, chapter one, right here. So if there's something you don't understand that relate to the chapter, you can just, you know, post your question. Oh, this is not clear to me, those things. Or here's the thing, I'm going to hear. Students can post questions here and I will look at that, okay? And if everybody's asking the same thing, then yeah, sure, I'm including in the lesson plan. But other students, other students can also help 
um, you know, clarify, you know, because here's the thing, guys, I teach certain things in a certain way. And that's my style. But some, like all of you, think about it. You guys, I was looking at your study plans. So many different, different things you guys use, you know. You may process the same information in a totally different way, but it's going to be perfectly, you know, correct. So feel free to, you know, share your uh, side of, you know, your opinion, your own, your side of things, you know, your side of looking at the same thing. So other students can also help clarify by, um, sharing their understanding, how they how they understood the problem. You know, sometimes they have some nice examples with their own examples. Um, you know, students can also post links to some. You don't upload the YouTube video here, please only links okay links to the youtube videos so if some if there's something that helped you links to some youtube videos okay now if there is something that helped you to understand a concept you know just post that link here and that that'll be helpful to other students okay that were helpful Okay, so, you know, we are building this together. We are all working together in this, okay? All right, guys, so I'm going to stop recording now. And um, I will be, I have already, oh, I have to show you something more. Um, sorry, <laughs> look here. Okay, so uh, this was your chapter one, which, you know, which I had to, I'm going to just upload one of the, um, uh, one of the notes also here. So I'm going to upload it here. This thing is going to be here, but for your next chapter on measurements. So I already have these posts. These are all already done for you. I mean, I'll see what else I need to make a new video, but pretty much these are these videos all relate to your, what you need in the chapter. Measurements, conversion factors, significance. So smaller, I've broken down the whole thing. So smaller lecture videos, okay? So your, this is ready. And then your, this, matter matter we are only going to do from 3.1 to 3.5 we're not doing the other the, the energy part yet so i have tried to show you this uh, you know mind maps uh, how to make the mind maps using the chapter on matter as an example so do that and then introduction to matter and transformation of matter all this is here and and then comes the Third one is the chapter on atoms. Once again, this is a lecture video, periodic table, lecture video on uh, memorizing the symbols, you know, all that stuff, then the atomic structure, lecture video, mass number. So all these lecture videos are uploaded. So pretty much we are good till, you know, your test. And like I said, if more things need to be uploaded, I'm going to monitor it and I'm going to be uploading them as well. Okay. All right, guys, keep up the good work. Thank you. Bye-bye.